Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to Act 3 on CHLY 101.7 FM. I am so delighted that you have joined us on this very fine day. My name is Kathy Holmes. I'm happy to be your host. In the Zoom booth with me today, I'm talking with Alison Crow, and we're going to talk about someone who was so important in our community and has been gone for a very long time. We're going to talk today about Lisa Marie Young. Welcome to the show, Allison. I am so glad that you're here. I know that this is a heartbreaking subject. Mm -hmm. For our listeners who may not know who Lisa Marie Young is, would you mind yes. sharing a little bit of her story with us? Sure. Um, so Lisa Marie Young uh, was a, a schoolmate of mine. Uh, she was a young Indigenous woman who uh, went missing. Sorry, pardon me. Um, just around Canada Day in 2002. Um, so that was the last time she was seen or heard from. Um, uh, Lisa herself was an awesome uh, young woman. She was kind and fun. She, I, I remember her being really funny, also like a really dry sense of humor. Um, you know, and, and it's a long time ago now. Uh, we're talking um, uh, 21 years, I guess. Um, yeah, because I, I think last year was the, well, no, it would be 2002. Anyway, uh, was when she was last seen. And, uh, you know, she was kind to everybody. She loved everybody. She uh, she was a vegetarian, <laughs> which uh, sort of in the 90s, that was kind of new. <laughs> I mean, yeah. new. I, like, but, you know, it was sort of like newish for the time, yeah. Yeah. I guess. I think yeah. in every generation probably has that. Anyways, um, and uh, yeah, she was, she was a sweetheart. She, even after high school, um, I, I was telling you a little bit earlier, uh, I used to do gigs at uh, the Queens Hotel uh, downtown in uh, in Nanaimo, and she used to come there and support, uh, you know, whatever band I was in at the time or whatever music and stuff. Because she loved, I think she loved music, and and she was always a real real sweet uh, person, and just a good person. Yeah, she was a good person, and uh, her favorite color was lime green. Uh, just, you know, these are so. There's fact about her as a person that I think uh I think that's really important to talk about yeah. um because you know she was an awesome person and I think it's really important that people remember that and and to also mention as well her mom Joanne was an awesome awesome woman as well and she is no longer with us as well it it's hard to talk about someone is, who yeah. has passed away some time ago but yet it's still fresh because mm -hmm. for the last 21 years uh, yes. Nanaimo has not stopped looking for her that's uh, right yeah you know I do is there any leads on the disappearance of Lisa Marie um I'm not super sure and I, I'm I'm not super qualified to to answer that um of course. I do know um that a woman named Laura Palmer has uh, put together a, an amazing podcast that is sort of the most up-to-date uh, information on Lisa's case and, and her Facebook page, uh, which I'll send you is really, really good for kind of keeping up to date on that. I don't want to, you know, of course. accidentally say something that's not helpful, I guess. No, no, no. Of um, course, of course. Because the bottom line is, is she's not been found. Her body or the remains of found. her have not been found. That's right. And, right. and I, you know, um, and so I know that she has a, a wonderful advocate in Cindy Hall. And of course, her family has been fighting, fighting, fighting for answers for years. And uh, really, there hasn't, there hasn't, uh, there hasn't been enough done, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I think, you know, now it's, it's becoming more in, in the spotlight. And I think people are talking more about it, partially just because now the internet is being more widely used. I think back sure. in the day, it was it was that information was maybe harder to get across and and all those things. But now people are talking. There is an interest in her podcast and all that stuff. So there's lots of people talking. I will say, unfortunately, there's also misinformation uh, out there. Uh, so I think the best place that you can get like correct information on her is that Facebook page and yeah, and does sure. come through her family and Cindy Hall and Laura Palmer and et cetera. Because, uh, um, yeah, I know personally, because I, I do know uh, some of her family members, that it's it's very hard uh, for members of her family to read stuff that isn't true or real. Um, 
you know, for years, they sort of had to deal with people calling them, let's say, and, and giving them information that was yes. fake. Or it, yeah. it just, I have no idea. I have no idea the reasoning behind it. But when someone tells you those things, of course, you have to look into it. And so that just causes a lot of uh, undue strain for family, I find. Um, so that's a long winded answer of saying like, yes, there's a, there's a podcast with a lot of the most up to date information, I think, as we know now, um, and some really, really great people running and, and advocating for her. And, uh, and of course, they just had uh, the the walk uh, for her. Yeah, uh, yeah. In her memory, let's, let's talk awesome. about the walk. Could, yeah. Who, who set up the walk? Is that an annual event? It is an annual event. And uh -huh. I know, I, I'm not sure entirely who sets it up, but I know that Cindy Hall is, is very uh, closely it, involved. Sure. Laura, yeah, Laura Palmer was really closely involved setting it up and members of Lisa's uh, family, um, you know, uh, immediate and extended, I believe. And, um, and so, yeah, and I, I think by all accounts, it was really well attended this year, which is awesome too uh, because for me personally um i think it's important to keep her name uh, out there and thank you so much for doing this today as well because oh, i think my pleasure my pleasure you know um i think there's probably people out there that are hoping we'll forget and and that know something and that need to talk and and need to say what they know now um because it's been too long and and the, and the family really you know deserves answers you know anyway yeah so i i feel like i'm <laughs> i'm meandering around a bit but that's that's well, sort of and it, it's understandable because at the end of the day when someone goes missing yeah. within our community it's very difficult yes. for the family and for everybody yeah. else to sort Absolutely. of wrap their head around you know the where yeah. the when the why the what the how yeah. you know it's it's not yeah. um it it it, it for for most of us, it yeah. goes outside of our brain power to imagine that somebody could all of a sudden take or lead astray or, you know, yeah. and when the circumstances are unclear, it makes it even harder. We can't wrap our yes. head around it. So why yeah. don't we talk about the journey that took you from 2002 to where you are now? We'll speak to it. Sure. I understand that Cindy Hall uh, and Lori Paul would be able to give the details more so yeah. uh, regarding, you know, the intimacies of the case. Yeah. And so yeah, we'll yeah. leave that to them to do sure. that uh, right. in another in another day, unfortunately. Um, I don't have them yeah. scheduled yet, but I think yes. that's a, a direction we want to go. Um, yes, I can get you well, in touch with them as well. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. Um, but I do think, Allison, like from your perspective, one of the reasons why you and I talked about being on the show was really to sort of talk yeah. about that journey of when when you lose someone so important in your world, even though, yeah. like you had mentioned earlier, you know, you guys were high school people, you would have yeah. gone to the same parties, you would have yeah. gone. It still intimately infects the way you go through your life moving forward. So tell us about your journey. Sure. sure. Um, so I I remember the the first time I heard uh, that Lisa was missing was 2002, like very, very shortly after I'd actually just done my first uh, cross Canada tour and then come home. And it was kind of one of the first things we heard uh, uh, on getting home. And I just remember being like, what do you, what do you mean? Like that, it, that seems crazy. Like, you know, how can someone just be gone? I, I don't get it. You know, and I remember, um, you know, and myself and a lot of my close friends all kind of felt the same way. So um, around that time, uh, there was a vigil, like, I, I I guess it was, and it's a long time ago now, but I think it was the first vigil that they held uh, in Lisa's, uh, you know, for Lisa. Um, I, wouldn't, I won't say in memory at that time, because I think, no, that's you know, there was still, still a lot of, where is she? she? Yeah. Someone might yeah. find her alive, especially right in those uh, early moments. Um, and I, I kind of felt a little bit like I, I wanted to do something, but I was like, what, what the heck can you do? Like, um, so I, I wrote a song basically uh, called Lisa song um, and just sort of had the words and I just sort of gave them to her family and, and to her mom. And, and from there, I, I sort of formed uh, a friendship with the family, just uh, just out of support, basically. Um, and I've just gotten to know them over the years. And, you know, as, as years have gone by, it can be pretty disheartening uh, with every year that passes that, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing like that's, that's a really it's a that's a hard thing and and for me I'm a, I'm an outside person it's hard to watch 
um, other people go through that. It's, it's really heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. And, you know, like I said, I was, I was close with her mom. Um, and occasionally, you know, like she would come to shows. I could see her every once in a while, her mom and her aunties and, and her family and stuff. They're awesome people. Um, and, and her mom, unfortunately became very ill and, uh, passed away, um, a few years ago now. And, uh, so, you know, the other thing that breaks my heart is that there was never justice while her mom was alive. Yeah. 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 A couple of times you've mentioned that, you know, yeah. there's the, the connection with music and, and I do yeah. apologize. I was unaware that you were a musician. Can you tell us a little bit about your music? Sure. Maybe of give us some of the lyrics in regards to Lisa's song. Um, so, so what I can do is I'll, I'll send you a link uh, to a video after, uh, but yeah, so I'm, uh, I guess I should have mentioned that. Yeah. I, I'm a singer songwriter uh, as part of one of, one of my jobs. Um, and uh, so I basically uh, wrote and recorded a song for Lisa called Lisa song. And, and there, I have an album from years and years ago now called uh, Lisa song plus six songs. Um, so I, uh, took proceeds from that album to help in aid the search for Lisa uh, back in the day. And that was also sort of part of the, the friendship between uh, myself and her family. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm sure that the family must have felt some solace knowing that they had such advocacy coming from you uh, mm. and, to, and for the song itself to help to raise some funds to help to find uh, whatever leads that could be found for Lisa. Could you share some of the lyrics with us though of that song? Uh, you know, even just some <laughs> of the stanzas that went with it that. Um, sure. It, it, it's kind of funny to, to say them. <laughs> I to can only them, imagine. So like, uh, you're you know, welcome to uh, sing them if you like, if you just want to do, you know, the chorus or something would be grand. Uh, I think. Or to put you on you the know, spot, the, if the you're, if you're not comfortable, I can lead people to the. To I think it's story. probably better if I give you a link. Cause I, I just think it'll, <laughs> okay. it'll, come, it'll make more sense. Like sure. contextually, I, it, yeah, sure. if that's all right, if that's okay with you. Of course um, it is. Absolutely. So, and you're welcome to play it and, and use it. I, Thank I you. have. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I have Creative Commons licensings and all of that stuff. So you're you're welcome to actually play it. it might be kind of cool. Um, that would be great for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So so I did that and and sort of said you know do whatever you need uh, with this song and you know it, it wasn't just me. There were loads of people in the community that were sort of reaching out, uh, wanting to help as well. And yeah. Can you share a little bit about Lisa Marie's family, her background, mm. you know, when she, you know, how long she's lived here prior to everything happening? What grade was she in when, like a little bit more detail about Lisa herself? Sure, sure. So we were out of high school for a couple of years uh, by 2002. Um, she would have graduated in 1999. Uh, so she went to Woodland Secondary School. We both uh, went to Woodland Secondary School. And, and as far as I know, Lisa was uh, born and raised in, uh, in Nanaimo. I could be wrong about this, so you may want to double check, but I think she went to Forest Park Elementary. Um, you know, there were sort of all the, the feeder schools, so like I went to Solaire, she went to Forest Park, my other friends went to Princess Anne, and all those feeder schools fit into to what's sure. right? For sure. Yeah, so I believe she was born and raised, she lived there her whole life. So um, yeah, she was 21 years old uh, when she went missing, and, and I always refer to it as when she was taken, because I, I feel like there's sort of a knowledge that something happened, and 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 it's it's probably very likely she's no longer with us right and it, you didn't that's you know that's just kind of yeah so so from your perspective yeah. you know going back to that time like I, I I hear you infer her as probably not being with us any longer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. um, but there's a piece that she's never been laid to rest and so no. you know that that in itself that grieving yeah. process that goes with mm -hmm. having a loss of a relationship that was mm -hmm. so dear to so many people within the community mm -hmm. right um, yeah. you know the schoolmates and all that as you said you know you guys would go to parties together and while you might not have been best friends in those days yeah, you know you certainly, sure. I mean she you knew right. who she was right Absolutely. Like, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that yeah. so how did you move forward with your own grieving because I, I I feel your emotion still yeah you know, by the way grieving can take forever there's no yeah. science to grieving but I'm I'm curious about the process for I'm for I'm not sure I have moved through it if I'm being completely honest sure. uh, because I I have 
I have a lot of anger, uh, you know, towards the fact that like, I think more should have been done by the police in the early stages that wasn't done. Um, yeah. And I think uh, it seems now that, you know, yeah, sure stuff is being done, but like, you kind of really wish it had been done a long time ago and and should have well, been. yeah because i would imagine the longer that you're away from something like that yes. the less, yeah, and and less I, evidence there is to find likely, right yeah and i do know and um there's they're doing searches uh now even now and i know that like her sister and cindy and lots of people are are you know uh, a, a major part of that um so that mm. is happening but i i just you know without without those solid answers, it's really hard. It's really hard. Um, and, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm not a family member. I'm, I'm just kind of on the outside. So I, j I cannot imagine how painful that must be uh, for her family um, I, as well. I can't imagine. I, you know, I grew up in, well, not grew up. I lived in Vancouver uh, yeah. during the time the Partington child went missing. And okay, yeah. uh, when they find, when they finally did find, you know, get the, the pedophile that stole him and and mm -hmm. several other you know children but I do recall our community being so confused and so yeah. I can only imagine what this must have been like for you know the community in Nanaimo where there it doesn't appear to be any answers the leads are cold there doesn't seem to be direction and yet yeah. there's still this gap this missing person that no one seems to have answers to you know how do we justify yeah. that yeah and and you know and i think now as well as as more attention is is being turned towards the fact that there is very clearly an epidemic of missing and murdered indigenous women and children um in this country yeah. that um and 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 she is is um involved or she is one as well right um now people are looking but it, like i i think and you know say i i you know, say a, a white girl had gone missing back then, I do full, firmly believe that they would have looked harder. I, I firmly believe that they would have listened to her mom more and closer. Yeah. And that's infuriating. So, you know. Um, but, you, but you're bang on, yeah. you know, there's something yeah. to be said for that, you know, I yeah. mean, when, when we know that, yes, it is true that the missing and murdered Indigenous women are being spoken of finally more yeah often and more regularly yeah. than ever in our history uh yeah. we can't we can't um we can't let go of the fact that that there's still no answers and it. it's still right. it's still a problem that people are taking potentially maybe at some point have changed that vision and they're working yes. towards yeah. you know finding but you're right like at, in 20 in 2002 we were pretty ignorant about what was happening absolutely at the best of times right yeah and so yeah. you know that that anger part must really you know be something that seeds in not only you I know it seeds yeah. in me. yeah 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 and that's again you know that's just like watching it it just seems it seems so obvious that that it's like well no you you could have looked harder but you just you didn't you know and that it wasn't that her family wasn't looking it wasn't that her friends weren't looking with but it yeah. was that you know I don't think that the police involved in the time really put the energy that they should have into that and um you know 21 years on well I'm, I'm glad it's happening now but it absolutely should have happened then and it doesn't negate the fact that it didn't right yeah yeah absolutely yeah. so so how do we mitigate this walking ahead how do how do yeah. you think that we can take the lessons that we would have learned and I'm not talking about the life lesson at the end of this I'm sure there's sure. plenty of time for us to talk about that later but for yeah. now like what are the lessons that we've learned so far what have you learned Allison from all of this uh, in your um, experience? Um, I think, you know, the, the biggest, I think, thing that, that I can sort of take away is to never stop saying her name. Never, never, um, let other people forget as well. Like, I think it's really important. I think it's really important to keep her name. And, and of course the names of the thousand other thousands of other missing and murdered indigenous women and children as well in this country like it is so important that we keep saying their names it is so important yeah. that yet yes time may have passed absolutely but you know that doesn't change the fact that she was taken from us and um that her family needs justice and they need to be able to lay her to rest 
and and for them to rest as well yeah 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 i i feel your grief radiating mm -hmm. through uh the lens of this conversation and mm -hmm. and for those of you who have just tuned in uh, thanks for tuning in to act three on chly mm -hmm. 101.7 fm uh we're talking about the tremendous loss in our community of lisa marie young um she was taken uh she was removed from our community at some mm -hmm. way or another in 2002 Allison Crow and I are having a conversation about what that feels like now and mm -hmm. how how can we keep her voice alive how can we keep this issue alive that's right uh, yeah and in doing that you know, I mean, the walk certainly helps and, you know, yes. attending functions and checking out Facebook pages and all of that stuff. Those are all really important things. But what does vigilance look like when it comes to something like this? Right. Um. So something that, um, you know, I, I think partially it's it's, it's uh, I, I do know, I think it was uh, um, a Krog um and uh, Sheila, they're they're local politicians. Um, yeah. Sheila well Malcolmson, have, Sheila Malcolmson have have yeah. been uh, speaking about her publicly. I think that's important. I think it's yeah. important that we do hold people locally in positions of power accountable and and be like, hey, this is happening here. This happened here. We need to talk about it. So they have done some great uh, things. I think it was Leonard Krogh uh, made uh, June 29th officially. Uh, lights on for Lisa Day, so that's a that's a small thing, but it's a big thing at the same time. Uh, because so what's so beautiful about that event is if you can't take part in the walk, you know, um, anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world you are, you can leave your lights on, you can take a picture of it and say like I'm remembering Lisa right now, yeah. you know. And I think there's something very powerful about that. It's yeah. And and not just for Lisa, but for all of the missing in Indigenous women to have lights on for Lisa is a wonderful yes. uh, segue yeah. to that. Now, for those listeners who have just tuned in, I also want, to, you know, we are taping this after lights on for Lisa. Yeah. Uh, okay. It is already gone by. Um, yeah. However, yeah. it's an annual event. Uh, and yeah. so to consider that um, as well as the walk in other ways, this is a 365 day conversation it's not meant yep. just to be surrounding anything in particular but that's right um yeah yeah so yeah. so because that's not a th excuse me event driven yep. you know what yeah. do you think people can do every single day to help remember lisa and help to be part of the solution instead of part of any of the you know instead of part of the problem like how how do you feel yeah. allison that we can be better um, I, I, I think I'm, I'm sort of uh, speaking from a place of privilege, obviously. Um, but I think it's sort of acknowledging that and, and, and giving space and platforms, um, to people who might not otherwise have that platform. I, you know, so for instance, I'm a, I'm a performer, I have a microphone. <laughs> um, and, and so for me, that sort of looks like I speak about her. You know, I, I refuse to forget her. I, I will put her name in everything I do, that kind of thing. So I'm sure it looks different uh, for different people. Um, okay. But so, it, and uh, so I've been asked to do interviews before as well. Um, and what I tend to do is say, yes, absolutely. I can talk about what I can talk about, but you should really be listening to her family and, and what they need and what their experiences are and just, just listen a ask what they need and just listen and and give what you can kind of thing and that's not i don't mean like give but like you know help well, out giving in, what in you can way. doesn't necessarily mean monetary it's not yeah not right. monetarily I mean, just you know whether that's support. just simply like a share whether that's uh you know uh like i said like putting up a light and taking a picture i i know that that means a lot uh, to the family every year so those you know that's a that's a very small support but it's a very big support at the same time you know yeah yeah if it's okay let's talk about the bigger sure. picture of missing yeah. indigenous women because yeah. you know basically I, I do know that Canadians overall are trying so much harder with truth and rec mm -hmm. uh, reconciliation, justice, equity, inclusion, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're looking for ways for us to be 
uh, better under the circumstances, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. how, how, you know, people talked about the red dresses. The red dresses were mm -hmm. up for a long time in support of the missing and Indigenous women. What do you feel has really been able to push the agenda forward uh, for the conversation? And how can we have mm -hmm. the conversation when it's uncomfortable? Um, I, I think it's it's just important to be honest. You know, I, I think it's important to just be have transparent conversations, be ready to hear hard things and provide platforms when you can. Um, yeah. you, you know what I mean? I, and and to sort of uh, be willing and, and to sit back and listen. You yeah. know, um, yeah. I, uh, that, and that's again, that's from for me personally, uh, speaking as a, as a white woman, like uh, sitting at uh, listening to like, what do you need from me? And then doing that. Right. Yeah. No, there's um, something to be said for that, for sure. Uh, you know, we yeah. are women of privilege uh, in yeah. that we are white women in a, yeah. in a society where life is a little bit easier for us as much mm -hmm. as yeah. we, you know, we don't want to think that way to be true. We're not walking in the shoes of other people who are not mm -hmm. as privileged. And so I think it's really important to understand um, a frame of reference there. Um, but also, I think that it's really important that we create opportunity for knowledge. And yeah. so when we look at, you know, going to the Facebook page, listening to Lisa's story, and listening it from the first hand from family members and all of that, we don't want to take away the conversation and put it in, you know, our box, we rather want to, as you said, listen, and support whatever support looks like to the family. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and that's yeah. sort of been kind of how I've approached it uh, as much as possible, because it really is, to me, it's it's really about her, it's about her family. And, and it's about like, um, also, uh, you know, if, if you just say in your everyday life, if you hear someone say something terrible, it, call them on it. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Sure. And, and, Absolutely. and like, that's on a ground level. I, I feel like it, starting to make the change. And that's the, the sort of the ugliness that the truth that you've got to kind of look within yourself that you have to con confront as well right so those are the yeah. those are the conversations um but really important i i just i can't stress enough is listening and um providing platforms for her family and yeah yeah and i think it's really important that people understand that listening isn't listening to answer but listening instead to be heard they're two different things um and I know that in First Nation culture, it's important, actually, and again, I can't speak to, uh, regarding First Nation cu mm -hmm. culture to any depth, but I've been taught by some great leaders uh, in the Sinemo First Nations and other First Nation communities who have said, you know, filling the space with words isn't listening, right? But it's okay to, to let people sort of take that moment to grieve. Our community has been grieving for 20 years over Lisa mm -hmm. Marie Young. Mm -hmm. um, and the platforms that people use, whether it's in your case, songwriting, and mm -hmm. whenever you're on stage or when you're you know across the country on tour, talking about the issues, bringing her name up wherever possible. I feel mm -hmm. blessed that I see that happening in Nanaimo on multiple levels. Recently, I drove past Matthew Sutton Park yeah, and also Lisa Marie's name was across, a and a banner yeah. was across, yeah. and I thought, "Wow, what an awesome opportunity for people to remember her name!" Mm -hmm. Because I think that they, there, there's a culture. I'm not sure which culture it is, so don't I can't speak to who said it mm -hmm. first. But someone said along the line that there are two deaths. The mm -hmm. first death is when the person actually passes over, and the second is when we forget to talk about them. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm really glad, uh, Allison, that you're here to yeah. help shed some light on this. What, ha what has it meant to you over these last 20 years uh, to consistently see her name popping up? What, 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 how do you think that speaks to the culture that we have uh, as Canadians? Yeah, I mean, I, I, it, it was kind of... Uh, especially in this last couple of years, it's really heartening to see that there is a growing, again, interest uh, in her case and, and her life and uh, who she was and what happened to her. And uh, 
you know, um, and also like I, I can't stress enough, there are people definitely out there living comfortably uh, who maybe shouldn't be, who know something, who either know something, did something, I don't know, because I'm not yeah. obviously qualified to comment on that, but you know, it's sort of holding their feet to the fire a little bit to feel like, no, we're not forgetting and, and don't get comfortable because yeah. we will we're coming after you. After. Yeah. 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 We're gonna find you, you. Know. you will not, you will not get yeah. through this without finding a guilty sentence when we found. Yeah. 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 I, I, it's, it's, I find it a difficult conversation and I find it an easy conversation. The easy conversation is when we bring up her name and we talk about the situation and we try to find solutions. I find the difficult um, conversation is not having the ability to say, okay, there is a closed box now. We have found the remains. We have figured it out. We're able to we're able to pursue this further. We're able to go ahead. We're able to yeah, do yeah. something. Right. And so, and so how do we, how do we, um, you know, in our daily activity, look for things like, is it, you know, is there, have, have there been at least some clues that you can speak to that, that have a, mm -hmm. will it kind of allow at least location, you know, like anything at all, is there anything or is it just yeah. full cool stop? Um, I, I unfortunately can't really speak to that because I, again, I'm, I'm just not qualified to, um, yeah. I do think there are, are, you know, occasionally tidbits of things that come up and then you can look into them, but, um, it's hard to say which one of those is, uh, you know, uh, what's the word is either credible is, uh, if it goes anywhere you know because I, I think over the years there have been several of those uh but so far you know uh we're still searching and, and we're still holding out hope for for answers at this point right yeah and so the yeah. best thing that we can do as community members is just to keep the vigil going just, just to keep, keep it on going. bringing her name yep. keep on having the conversation wherever we possibly can yep. uh yeah, I, I, it, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's my heart breaks actually for the whole conversation that, that yeah. we don't have those, so those uh, answers just right now. Um, yeah. And so Allison, you know, Lisa was one of your classmates. Uh, yeah. You had, you had a relationship with her as many of the students uh, had relationships with her. Can you talk a little bit about her character? Like who, who was Lisa? Yeah. So uh, Lisa was, so funny she was like kind of quiet but also super fun it, it's really hard to, it's hard to explain she was um very I, I I like if I can remember correctly and again this is high school now I'm 41 so that's a, that's a long time ago <laughs> it was a bit ago uh, my yeah. memory you know uh my memory is of a very like quietly funny person like I I can imagine a sort of like a dry sense of humor um and it's very very funny very sweet very like uh kind to anybody right like she she non-judgmental just awesome awesome fun person but uh yeah I think she was very creative uh as well she loved fashion she loved all that stuff so all that kind of like late 90s fashion she was like on top of it I remember I remember like being at school being like she's so cool like she's <laughs> she's so cool like she had these cool like beaded bracelets and her clothes were always neat and and like oh she had like you know cool flare pant you know that kind of stuff yeah 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 this time so yeah yeah that, that's that's what I remember and a hard worker too man like um she uh well I think she well she managed McDonald's for a while at, like quite a young age to be a manager also uh but and um just of course uh, before she went missing had just uh, gotten a new job I think at a at a call center and she had hopes of being a sports broadcaster because she loved sports as as well and and so so yeah she was an awesome person and I think that's you know part of what makes these things so hard is she had this whole cool future that was just uh taken from her right yeah 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 she should still be here she should still be here I couldn't agree with you more. Mm -hmm. And leaving behind, uh, did she have brothers and sisters as well? She had a, a, a very large family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and she still does have a large family. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 But unfortunately, mother was lost a bit ago. What about her dad? Yeah. 
her her dad is still around. He's he's a sweetheart as well. He's he's a little of more course. quiet. He's he's not so much online <laughs> because maybe <laughs> the rest of us are. But he's an awesome person as well. And of course, has been fighting uh, to find answers for his daughter for this whole time as well. I know, I know. In the early days, you know, he was going door to door asking, like, "Have you seen her?" All that, like, you know, her her family has been trying really hard for a very very long time. So, you know, we it's I think one of the things that um and I can only speak for myself again I can't speak for her family uh, of course but I know for me is, is occasionally you'll get this this hope that we're you're so close and and maybe this is it kind of thing maybe this will be the answer and and that sort of uh that repeated sort of like nope that wasn't it but we're gonna keep getting up and, and keep searching is uh yeah it's, it's pretty it's pretty hard that's an understatement obviously it's really hard but yeah, yeah. But, it, you know, 21 years is a long time for someone to it be is. missing. I mean, that's got to yeah. be hard on the guts, right? Like you're, yeah. it's over Absolutely. and over. It's re-traumatizing year after year after it year, not yeah. having the answers year after year after year. I, I, can't, I can't even imagine what that might be like, um, yeah. you know, to to sort of endure as a as a friend of the family, as a partner in, in trying to find advocacy, uh, you know, all yeah. of it, it. It hits on so many levels. I, I, yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, you know, but I, I think it's really important. It, just keep talking about her. Just keep talking. That's all I do. You know, that's really all I do It is just, I see something come up. I share it. I talk about her in a show. I, you know, that, that kind of thing. Um, whenever I can. Um, Why don't we talk a little bit about your career as well? But if you sure, don't mind. Sure. So Allison, yeah. tell us a little bit. I mean, yeah, as a musician, you know, what, what uh, you know, obviously you've written a song, Lisa's song, we'll play it on yep. the show itself. I'll make sure that that's heard um, um, also. But out of curiosity, you know, mm -hmm. what, what, what brought you to music? Is that something that you've done your whole life? And did Lisa yeah. <laughs> uh, ever participate with you in, in school band or anything like that? Lisa was in band uh, I did do all the school band stuff and I had loads of friends in band I don't think Lisa was ever in band um but uh I mean I've been a I was I was doing gigs <laughs> I was like should I say this I was doing gigs in the bar when I was in high school sure I was, I was like grade 10 doing, doing stuff. you know anyways that uh, can either confirm or deny that I was uh you know uh 19 or not but um I was I was doing gigs <laughs> from as far back as I can remember and I, I've been writing songs since I was a kid right so but it's it's been a lifelong thing and now now I'm less on tour and more um uh recording and, and doing things like that um and working in theater as well so yeah have you got any plays or anything coming up or are you just I'm uh, actually this is uh, uh, yeah, I'm in I'm in a, a bunch of stuff this summer. I, I every year I work in a, a festival uh, called the Gross Martin Theater Festival in a place called Cowhead in Newfoundland, where I am. Uh, so that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, so Monday is the only day that I don't have shows. That's <laughs> that's why Monday it had to be for the, for the. Well, interview. Monday's a great day to be on CHLY 101.7 FM and awesome. on my it show. Sure just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Well, yeah. you know, I, I am delighted that you're here and I really appreciate you taking the time to share course, your wisdom uh, about all of this. You know, I still, I, I, I keep wanting to go back and help find solutions for community on things that we can do. And, you know, mm -hmm. obviously her name now you've taken across Canada with you. If you're in Newfoundland as we're having this conversation yep. and yep. we're talking about a young Nanaimo lady who is, or young lady who was taken from us when she was mm -hmm. just starting her life at, yeah. you know, the ripe young age of, you know, in her teens and early twenties. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, how has Canada in each of the concerts that you've had, how have they, how has Canada stood up for Lisa? Have you seen it across a, a movement across the country in support um, of, of her name and her, um, and I would and say yes. Uh, um, less so like on a, on a concert level, more so, especially since the podcast has come out, I think sure. because, uh, I think podcasts are so in the sort of public place right now that a, a lot of people are creating podcasts. A lot of people are listening to podcasts. I think it's this really uh, incredible way um, of sharing your story, not just within Canada, like uh, all over the world as well. Of you course, know, there's been, there's been a lot of interest in her story just uh, from the States. I know that 
you know, there, uh, there's been like uh, rewards offered up by people from the States, all that kind of stuff. Like there's been help coming across and that is, I believe purely from the pot, the advent of the, the podcast coming yeah, out and, and sure. people listening. And then of course, from there you get sort of updates as, as that goes along. So I do, I'm, I'm so grateful. It's uh, Laura Palmer uh, who created this podcast. Uh, she's a, a former CBC journalist, I believe, but um, so she has a podcast called Island Crime and her first season was Lisa Marie Young. Um, so, you know, she's done a, a great deal of really awesome work and uh, Cindy Hall as well uh, as an advocate. And of course, um, you know, Lisa's family, <laughs> of course, you know, they're, they're number they're number one and in, in all of that stuff. And so I think just things like the podcast and then people hear the podcast and then they sort of converge together on places like the Facebook group say that um, that's a, yeah, I would say that's probably the best place that you can get the most up to date information is her Facebook page. Um, and of course, is there a link to the podcast on her Facebook page by chance? I believe there is. If there's not, I'm going to all email you a, a link to Absolutely. Podcast. <clears throat> and so for our yeah. listeners, I, I should probably do a station identification here just to give a little hand. Sure. So for those of you who just tuned in to Actory on CHLY 101.7 FM, thank you so much for tuning in this fine Monday. We really, really appreciate it. If you missed this program and you want to catch up on the part of the uh, broadcast that you missed, go to our YouTube station. Make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, we look forward to being able to share the information in the chat box. I'll put the links in for some of the things we've been talking about today, including the podcast that uh, uh Allison has been uh, sharing with us um, and also a, a, a link to her song, which I think is <laughs> going to be a lovely uh, additive as well. You can also listen to us on iHeartRadio and Spotify, and we look forward to uh, showcasing some of this conversation on Shaw Spotlight on our next episode on Cable 4. So please tune in for that as well. Allison, you know, this is, I really, really appreciate you coming and sharing this conversation with me. I know how hard it's been, mm -hmm. um, you know, that I can feel the emotion in the conversation. Mm -hmm. I can feel the grief still very much a part of it. But I also can really feel that there is a positive spin that's happening from all of this. And the fact mm -hmm. that people are really talking about, you know, missing Indigenous women, mm -hmm. uh, children and girls, especially that, you know, were not spoken about before. Um, as part of truth and reconciliation across the country we're all working mm -hmm. and very mindfully I think uh, mm -hmm. at you know really starting to listen to what the stories have been um, and with Lisa Marie also coming from First Nation territories mm -hmm. it is important to acknowledge that this lens cannot be understated we have to really uh, be diligent and prayerful that we can find some answers not only for her but for all of the families that have been missing their loved ones. How mm -hmm. can we, you know, as we move forward in our conversation, Allison, you know, what would you recommend that people do in the way of learning more about truth and reconcilia uh, reconciliation? Do you, do you mm -hmm. um, have from your own experience, have there been some, you know, really helpful, besides the podcast, some really helpful, mm -hmm. um, you know, information for people to when they want to research how they can be of service and how they can understand what really the issues are? Um, and, you know, and, and again, I don't know if I'm super qualified to say this, but that this goes uh, back to um, researching as much as you can. Um, I think uh, before before asking someone to do the emotional labor for you, figure out what you can figure out on your own. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, that that kind of that kind of thing and then also just listening to people when they they tell you what they need um and uh you know it, i like it, that it, i like what you said about the emotional labor do the emotional yeah. work first like get, yeah. do you mind it just to, just for our listeners who might not really understand what that means how would sure. you like to just share a little bit about that i i agree so, with you i think it's a brilliant concept yeah you know it, instead of going like well gee well I don't know this thing you know I'm going to ask this person about it I really take a second to think about what that might put that person through before you ask them right yeah. um so you know if you know someone who's the family of someone who's gone missing and before you know before saying like can you tell me all these details about it and how do you feel about this blah 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 well do do the work yourself first yeah. uh, because yeah. that may be 
re-traumatizing someone. You may, you're asking someone for information that you may be able to just find online, yes. you know, that kind of, kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's, personally, I think that's a really way to go about it. Yeah. And then, like I that's said, provide advice. the platform when people, when people need to speak, uh, provide that platform as well. So coming up then, uh, we yeah. unfortunately the leave the lights on has already passed. That happened on June yes, the 29th. It has, yeah. Uh, are there a series of events throughout the year, or is it just once a year, or twice a year that there's the walk and then the leave the light on? There's they're pretty much the the walk and the leave the leave the lights on for Lisa. Um, yeah. You know, uh, I always think about her on, uh, and I could be wrong with the day May fifth. Um, it was her birthday. Um, so that's, you know, that's a time when I was just in, in checking in. I'm, I'm kind of never not thinking about her to be totally honest. Um, but as far as events go, th those, those two are kind of yeah. the, the main ones. So, you know, if you are in Nanaimo and you can get down and support and just, you know, show up, be a human in that space that shows like you support, uh, you support the family, you, you want them to have justice you want them to find answers and have closure yes. <laughs> you know and, and and whatever that looks like whatever that looks like for yeah. you know for everybody it's different obviously um but i mean you know finding her i think is is the biggest the biggest part of that as well i i really appreciate you spending your time with us today um thank you and i do, thank you for I, do I really truly feel the grief and mm -hmm. my prayer is that she is found mm -hmm. um you know as we close out the show today uh we're gonna close it out by actually playing your song okay and great. so uh i think you know we'll just take a moment to you know let that be part of the conversation um and then, you know, really to get people to, you know, what, is, what do you feel the wisdom is for mm -hmm. all of this? Like if you could, if you could share a piece of wisdom that you've learned over the last 21 years mm -hmm. or your experiences, what would that look like for you? Um, so for me, it, it, especially in doing, say, interviews like this, um, um, the, what I always find so difficult is, is to be very cognizant of not making it about you right yeah. um and so it's it's very important for me um to say things like you know please talk to her family please talk to cindy hall who it was a friend as well um yeah. so she was a friend at the same time i was a friend of lisa weirdly we never met because it was in two different circles but we know each other now uh, so we have absolutely this connection, which is amazing um and and i think you know, to not be afraid to say her name, you know, I, I, because uh, I, I think there's parts of this that people maybe find scary. Um, but the fact is, like, this has happened. Uh, we need to stand up for her because, and, and yeah, just not forget and, and don't let it fall by the wayside uh, because I think that there, so less so now, but there was a few years where it really felt like people weren't talking about her anymore. And, and that was really hard. So it kind of feels like you're, you know, um, just like screaming it out and no one's listening uh, kind of thing. Now I do feel that people are listening uh, more so now uh, than ever. I, it, it seems more so even than maybe when she first went missing. I, I could be wrong about that, but it, it does seem like there is a, you know, a renewed interest in in speaking her name and and telling her story so that's great and i i think it's just yeah just keeping that alive thank you so much allison that's a great piece of wisdom and i and i do my prayers for the family or that she is been she will be found yeah and that as you have so beautifully said over and over during this broadcast, uh, let's keep saying her name. So mm -hmm. Lisa Marie Young, we miss you. We wish you were here and we honor your life. And thanks mm -hmm. for, thanks for sharing with me today, Allison. Really, it's been Thank a you. pleasure having you. Be the one to 
And really, it's been thank a you, pleasure Nancy. having you on the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and thank you for providing a platform for her name to be spoken. I appreciate that. Well, I intend to speak her name a lot. Just, Excellent. just say. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, thanks again. Um, you have you've been listening to uh, Act Three on CHLY 101.7 FM or on iHeartRadio or Spotify or all of the platforms that we share this. And uh, this is a call to action. Say her name, Lisa Marie Young. We miss you. And that, we wish you a happy day. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next time on Act 3.